right, all right. Whew. Almost time to go live and we should be live now. Hey, everybody. So it is the last speaker of the day and she is going to bring it home for you because you know that I love a goal. I love setting goals. I love crushing goals. It's what I like to do. And I want you guys to feel the same way. And Nicole is going to make sure that you do. But before, I have a Nicole story that Nicole doesn't know. I feel like I have a story about all the speakers that they don't know. <laughs> so I found out about Nicole from a friend of mine, Doreen, who runs The Smart Woman. And she was in Jamaica for about eight months living there. And she's like, you have to know about Nicole. You have to know about Nicole. And I started following her on Instagram. And I'm like, okay, okay. And then, you know, you follow, you like the vibe. And first of all, let, I mean, if you know me, you know, first and foremost, I'm Jamaican. That's me forward. And if I'm having an international conference, Jamaica must be represented. Jamaicans virtual extra. We, we are just a little bit. I'm not extra or anything. It's not like I have a flourishing backdrop or nothing like that going on. But we are we we like to be seen. We like to everyone to know who we are. We have brought you some great things in this world. But I'm not here to just brag on Jamaica. I'll just leave that alone for a little bit. But yes, that's how I found out about Nicole and I started following her on Instagram and I love the content. And then I also I might my dad, he does music. And then he started telling me about Agent Sasko. And I was like, two and two together. How comes I didn't put these two things together? <laughs> right? And if you know her, you should know that she has that winning. And you should also know that her husband sings that song, Winning. And you better know that song because it gives you that winning spirit. If you want that motivation, listen to it in the morning. It'll get you. It'll get you. So we are going to get Nicole to really lay it down for you all because she is our Jamaican representative. And I am so proud to have her here that I can't even put it in words. I'm beyond proud, okay? So enough of me. <laughs> it's time for Nicole. Nicole, take it away. Drop the mic on the screen. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, everybody. I am so super excited to be here with you today. I know I'm very aware I'm the last speaker, so I was like, okay, I'm going to make sure I bring the energy, even though I am sort of known for my energy level, which is very high. Now, I want this to be as interactive as possible. Let me toggle to the event chat right here. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Casey. Hey, Emna. Uh, Samantha, I'm thrilled to be here, and we're going to talk about goal setting to win. No, you, you guys, maybe you've seen me in the chat uh, from earlier today. I've been inside of this chat, okay? I've been in the event um, from the very first speaker all the way up to the last speaker. And so, because I wanted to get a sense of what gems were being dropped, what y'all were hearing. Because, you know, I was not about to be repetitive. I wanted to just kind of bring it together and be like, okay, how are we going to move from the action into the execution? Because I'm sure this is not your first event, your first conference. Maybe it's your first online conference. Maybe it's not. I've been to many, 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 many conferences. And they're awesome. They're great opportunities for growth. So first of all, pat yourselves on the back for investing in yourself because that's so important, right? And I hope you all have been using the cool networking features and um, follow up on who you've met immediately. But I, I've, I've been to many conferences and the ones that really changed my life are the ones where... I take action on the information that was provided because y'all know it's one thing to know and it's another thing to do. So I really want to talk about the doing of it, the execution of it today. So I must share my screen right now. I get slightly nervous when it's time to share my screen. And the reason is because I had a very traumatic thing happen to me where I was giving a presentation, right? Um, to a group of parents and students, and I went, um, I pressed to share a screen on Zoom, we were using Zoom, and then it, it shared, like, I thought it was sharing the PowerPoint, and so I kept going, I was super confident, um, but what it was actually sharing was um, my WhatsApp desktop chat, 
if you can imagine what how mortified I was. No, luckily it wasn't any anything racy. It wasn't anything happening. It wasn't convo me and Saska going on. It was just it was just me um, talking about work stuff. But I'm always nervous to know since then about sharing screen. So anyway, I'm going to um, share now. Okay, this one is simpler than Zoom. So is, if everybody is seeing and hearing, let's say yes, please. So that I can um, be confident as I begin to talk. Okay, all right, let's do this. All right, let's talk about goal setting to win. Um, I have a short video that I wanted to play. I was like, I see myself like talk as usual, <laughs> but I see myself talking to people, going to different schools sometimes, or going to different places, and speaking to children, speaking to adults, speaking to them, hearing their concerns. I want to be a people person. There has to be something more than material things. What's really important? It's what you have in your heart. It's what you think. It's what you say. It's how you relate to other people. That's really important. I'm not clear on my exact mission, but I can't, I'm not clear on that yet. But I'll get there. So I see myself like talking as usual, <laughs> but I see myself talking to people, going to different schools. Okay, so that was 13-year-old me, 14-year-old me being interviewed by the network Nickelodeon. Um, I was chosen as uh, the future according to kids for a feature because of my involvement in youth advocacy and youth empowerment. I, at 13, was the representative for Jamaica, the youth representative for Jamaica at MIT's World Junior Summit. And I was just very passionate. I was Fearless. And I want to, I, I played that video because I want you to first remember or take yourself back to what you were as that fearless young girl. What, what were you thinking that you were going to do? What did you want to do? How did you feel? Um, because it's often that energy that we need to tap into. You know, the world happens to us. And sometimes our fears and insecurities and doubts um, threaten to get the best of us, you know, and, and the disappointments weigh us down and all the baggage that we acquire. And so I really believe that if you truly want to reach your goals, there is this unloading that you have to do and this channeling back into the, the real authentic you, the real thing in your stomach that gets you moving um, and channel that. So as a young girl from Jamaica, I was fully focused on taking over the world. Um, on the screen right now, you see my graduation picture from St. Andrew High School for Girls. Then I went to boarding school at, at Andover, um, a private school on the East Coast. And then I um, got admitted to Princeton University uh, in 2002, where I decided I would study economics because it sounded practical, like it was going to make money. Um, this was this was me here, and I, I want you to remember this girl because as I talk about how we go from, from vision to reality, I want you to really understand where I'm coming from, um, that I didn't just come up here, here today talking to you about, oh, yeah, it goes. I want you to understand that I've lived the up and down. I've gone from the fearless um, young girl to the scared, uncertain young adult. And it was at the point where I made a decision to be different, that everything opened up and changed changed for my life. So I do want you to record this picture. Um, this one now is, I, this, 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 this video is... <laughs> I'm trying to become a TikToker, but I just wanted to give you that background. Hi, you know, my name almost... is Donica Allen. I am a Kingdom ambassador, a wife, what? 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 mom, oh, and Sorry, a I'm very pro school accelerator. Something is playing that shouldn't be. I'll, I'll go back to that um, picture. That there's apparently a background video that shouldn't be playing. 
Um, so what I wanted to show you that video is that when I was in college, I almost became an investment banker because it made a lot of money. Um, coming from Jamaica, I don't know what you guys know about Jamaica. Any Jamaicans in the room have been asking my IG friends to come to this event. But, you know, people have a conception of Jamaica. There's, you know, there is a high level of poverty. It's a developing country. And I have these great opportunities in New York. Um, you know, going to this Ivy League school, I could have gone to Wall Street, which I did for two summers. I tried to fit myself into that mold desperately. I, I remember what it was to feel afraid and insecure and want to do the safe thing. I wanted to do the safe thing. I wanted to make everybody proud. I didn't want to fail. I was so afraid of failing. But I did the job. I, I showed you in the picture. I got my first pair of sunglasses. I was so absolutely thrilled about that. But the truth was that I was not happy. I was not happy doing that work. And so, um, and so, you know, I decided I would move back to Jamaica. I moved back to Jamaica scared. Many people were wondering what on earth I was doing. Um, I didn't know what I was doing. So I went to grad school soon after, like, well, I need something to do. Why not go back to school? Um, in retrospect, I wouldn't have done it that way, but I was scared. And then I came back. To Jamaica uh, by this time as, as I told you I met my husband future husband um, and I started working at the Ministry of Education in Jamaica you know when you're doing something and it looks great to the outside world but inside of you I don't know if you ladies ever experience this but you know that there's more you're like there is more here and even though it looks safe and good to everybody else you know what's inside of you and you owe it to you to move on that so I volunteered with Princeton as an interviewer and interviewed somebody who I know could have done better with her college application to get the scholarships. I knew eh, how she had put it together wasn't quite going to swing. And I wanted to help her so desperately. So I ran home. This time I've, I've moved in with my boyfriend, much to the horror of my older sister. Um, <laughs> so I moved in now with no ring. And, um, and I go, to, and I said to him, I should, I want to do this. I want to start this um, helping students to get into college. And he says, why don't you go for it? And I was like, okay. And so I went and I didn't even know it was an industry. I Googled it. I was so excited in my gut. I knew I had to do it. Got trained. Six months later, I quit my job. And that's when I started my first business 10 years ago, the AIM Online Academy. So I just wanted to give you sort of that context. And I, I'm sorry that there is audio in the background. I want to show you through some pictures, but we're going to have to ignore the audio. I'm really sorry about that. Remember, um, I joined family back in 2018, and it really has been students. a life-changing experience, um, and I really wanted no, to take the, the time. Accelerator club. So that's kind of me at present. Now, what I want you to think about is, as that boundless, limitless child, or if there was no risk of failure, and if you could do anything, what would it be? And if you're doing that, no, great. But also behind that, what is your why? And the reason why I start with that is because I find that in terms of achieving goals and deciding which goals to focus on, and then also making many other decisions in our lives. And you know, as women, we're always juggling multiple things. I mean, am I the only one who always like juggle, juggle, like, okay, this person needs me, that person needs me, Lauren need this, Jeffrey need that. I have to be a wife, I have to be a daughter, I have to be a friend, I have to run these businesses, I have to find time for myself. Like life sometimes feels overwhelming. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't achieve their goals is because of that overwhelm and that confusion. But I found that clarity on your why, your mission for being on this earth and knowing what your values are gives you all you need in terms of, okay, mapping out where to go from there. If you don't have that clear, then nothing else will quite work optimally. Okay, right, Judy? All right, Judy is with me, perfect. No, clarity is power. So once you get that clarity on your why, then you will have the power to power the goals. Clear why, the clear values, clear on who you are, on what you like, on what you don't like. Security in being that person. You know, I love to talk. I don't know if y'all noticed yet, but I really love to talk. That's my personality. I'm very outgoing. I'm high energy. That's what I love. 
when I was at that investment bank, I was sitting in front of the computer on the spreadsheet, looking on these numbers. Uh, it was not me. It did not align with who I am. And clarity on who I am helps me know to decide what is in alignment and what is not in alignment. Because as entrepreneurs, what we have to know is every opportunity is not your opportunity. Every good opportunity doesn't mean you have to go over there and take it because you might end up being so very busy or you might be broke or you might be stressed or just having this huge to-do list and all these tasks but not feeling like you're moving in a meaningful, needle-moving way on the goals that mean the most to you. So it's really important to have that clarity so you can weed out what counts and what doesn't. Clarity is also important because you might feel your gut calling you in another direction. I don't know if anybody has ever had that experience. I told you that AIM Online Academy was my first business, right? And then I started what is called the Goal Accelerator Club about two years ago. I started the Goal Accelerator Club just really tiny, just me and, you know, I don't know, maybe like a few women. Um, and it wasn't even called the Goal Accelerator Club. It was just me helping people to get clearer about their vision. I found an execution because I found that I had kids about two years into my one year into my being an entrepreneur and got married the same year and everything changed. I started the business in 2010. I got married and had my first baby in 2011. And then I had another baby in early 2013. And the struggle was real. Okay. When I tell you, I felt like a crazy person. I was like, how do people do this? This is impossible. So I knew I needed to level up in terms of my personal capacity. I needed to level up my skills. I needed to become a boss. And so I started the Goal Accelerator Club because I had to really just go out there and learn all these different things um, and study and try and what doesn't work and what works. And then I wanted to help other women to be able to implement these tools to help their lives to flow smoothly, even though they're pulled in a ton of directions, right? And so when I decided I wanted to do Goal Accelerator Club, I was like, but what does that have to do with education? What does that, you know, and a lot of people have this issue, like I'm multi-passionate. I care about lots of different things. And so um, clarity helps you to, clarity, I'm sorry, helps you to make decisions, okay? Now, suppose you say, okay, Nicole, I am clear, but I have multiple passions, which is what I just said. And I have multiple whys, and I don't know. So let me hear, let me hear a yes in this chat, right? I'm watching the chat. I want to hear yes if you have felt at any point in your life like you have more than one passion like there's more than one thing you're good at or that you really want to do more than one group of people you want to serve and you you just almost don't know well how do i do it all and what i would say to that is because remember part of the deliverable here is to choose hi my name is donica allen oh, i am no, a is kingdom a okay let's Okay, this is really awesome. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what happened to this presentation. It is definitely not. Can I unshare? I'm sorry. You know, sir, I never really wanted to have technical difficulties here. Um, guys, something happened to this presentation, and I don't know what it is. I just have to close it and restart it. But lucky thing, I love to talk so much, so I'll keep it moving while I'm talking. Um, let me just, I think I'll just go ahead and duplicate it and then delete the previous slides and then reshare. Is that cool? So you have these multiple things, right, Hazel? Right, Olga, Amanda, Kristen, Doris said yes. Okay. You have these multiple things you want to do. Um, but guess what? Focus is power. And and um, what I have found in my experience is that when I'm trying to do too many things at once, there is something that's going to get diluted. Um, and it might just be my happiness and my joy. And I take my happiness and my joy so very seriously. And I, I have to show up for my family and show up um, for myself in very specific ways that I need to be on and popping, right? And so at the end of the day, it does not make sense to be in pursuit of all these different goals um, all at the same time because you're going to get diminishing returns and you're going to find at the end of it that you, again, you're, you're paying for it with your joy, you're paying for it with your happiness, and you don't want that to happen. We don't want to be running around crazy. We want to be like, you know, um, uh, Stanford had this um, had this 
picture or or I don't know if Stanford put it out, but it was representative of the Stanford students where the ducks are in this lake and everything looks smooth and it's all going well. Um, but underneath the lake, the, the ducks are pedaling furiously, furiously. I don't know if have you guys ever seen that image. Um, and so, so the idea is not to be pedaling furiously all the time. And in the in in the talk right before mine, the previous speaker talked about how you know part of why we feel this way is we're always on. And I have made a decision for my life that I don't want to live my life in that way. Um, I know, yes, there is you know all these things I could be doing and accomplishing, but at the same time, I want a certain quality of life, and I have to choose what I'm going to pursue and what I'm not going to pursue. So I think it's, it's really important for us to have that clarity as entrepreneurs. What is the type of life you want to live? What is the type? And, and define your success for you, right, Olga? Don't worry about like looking over there and seeing somebody else's success and you look over there and that person seems to be getting more goals than you. You got to run your own race. So you have to be like, this is what is on my plate and this is what I'm choosing. I could be doing way more things, but I'm choosing. I'm like, I don't want that life. I want weekends to be weekends, okay? So I don't work on weekends generally. And I really want to protect my time with my family and my relationships. And I have that as a priority. Mm -hmm. So I really believe as women, as entrepreneurs, we have to get very clear in our minds. That's why I said clarity is power. We have to get clear not only about what our goals are, but also about what our priorities are, what and who are the people that matter most, and how are we going to build a life and design a life and structure time accordingly to support those. So I'm at a space right now in my career and in my life where it is all about systems and automation. And if that's one tip I could give you as a, I don't know where you are in your business. Can you guys just tell me where you are in your business right now? Christine Hazel, Amanda, I don't know where you are in your business, but if I could go back in time, I, well, not really, because now I changed my aim college prep business to a totally online business. So I have to be designing new systems anyway. So it's like a brand new start. But you have to put systems in place and rely on automation so that you can have a life for yourself and so that your family can have you and so that you get to, to enjoy that quality. So focus on what you can systemize and automate and always be on the lookout for that. Okay, we're back to business, baby. All right. These are a couple of quotes that I really love and I wanted to share, right? I am what I am, but not yet. Give yourself some grace, okay? Give yourself some grace on the way to all those goals because as ambitious people, we beat up on ourselves. We want everything to happen overnight. I am like, I'm like, I don't want it. No, I want it yesterday. That's who I am. So I have to always be tempering that with Nicole. Look how far you've come. Calm down. It's okay. You know what I mean? So so I think it's really important for, for us to embrace the fact that we're constantly in this state of becoming and be committed to that, right? Um, and then this, this quote, quote by Clear Way, the best thing about your life is that it is constantly in a state of design. This means you have at all times the power to redesign it. Make moves, allow shifts, smile more, do more, do less, say no, say yes. Just remember when it comes to your life, you are not just the artist, but the masterpiece as well. So as we talk about all the things we need to put in place and the systems and the automation, can we just appreciate how far we've come and be excited about what is coming from here? Be excited about the process of redesign. Even if you're like, oh, I should have done this a long time ago. Oh, why can't this be over? I'm just telling you what I think. Um, just embrace it as an opportunity, right? And definitely, definitely focus on the systems and the automation. The other um, suggestion that I would, I would have is, delegation um but let's talk about that a little bit further down and let's talk about choosing the goal um because from automation and systems which i was kind of talking about just till i got the presentation back up i always flow into delegation and it's so key and we're going to talk about it in a few so back to the multiple goals and the multiple passions right all go back to all of that choose one I don't care how passionate you are right now. You got to choose one. I'm telling you to choose one because I want you to appreciate that life happens in seasons. When I had newborns, anybody in here ever had a newborn? 
I wish I could go back in time and tell new mom Nicole to calm down and not listen. You're not getting much sleep. You're not going to get much sleep for two years. You need to just relax and do your best. I don't know if I have any new moms in here who need that message. But see, why I said, why I brought that up is because life happens in seasons. You're not a new mom forever. Okay, if you choose one goal and decide you're going to go in and go hard on it for one complete year, right? Um, then in year two, you could choose another goal. In year three, you could choose another goal. Year four, you could choose another goal. Year five, you choose another goal. You had five big goals and you took each year to zero in on each and you're winning. Compared to if you had five big goals and at the beginning of the year, I'm going to get all five goals. Is anybody, is anybody getting what I'm saying here? Because this is a real problem. It's like we don't appreciate time the way we need to. We, we want everything to happen right now. We want to have it all right now. And, you know, there's a quote that says, I want to have, you can have it all, but just not all at the same time. And so I want to just encourage you that don't have too many big goals that you're focusing on. You are going to frustrate yourself. You are going to have diminishing returns to, uh, to your investment of time. Your, your quality of life is also going to suffer. So I want you to choose one. Appreciate life in seasons. Um, Myron Golden had this really great quote yesterday. I posted it on the Goal Accelerator Instagram page. And it says, remember when I, I remember when I first embarked on this journey of entrepreneurship, I got often got accused of being out of balance. Anybody ever feel out of balance? Right? Um, balance is a season, but focus is also a season. The same way that summer is a season and winter is a season. It's never summer and winter at the same place at the same time. When you're in focus, you're out of balance. And when you're in balance, you're out of focus. Your seasons of focus earn your seasons of balance. The longer you work and develop your skills in a field of expertise, you will find that longer seasons of focus on the front end will earn you longer seasons of balance on the back end. Amen to that. But if you put too much attention on balance at the beginning of your journey, you will end up with neither focus or balance. So, it's perspective, um, and I really resonate with this one. I'm in a particular season right now with the pivot of my local business to online, and I really resonate right there. And so in my journey of entrepreneurship for the past 10 years, I can definitely see the seasons of it. And if I had appreciated the seasons earlier, I think I would have been more productive. But guess what? You live and you learn. So seasons, important concept I wanted to leave. All right, so we talked about clarity, how it breeds focus, right? And focus is what breeds the winning. And I'm talking about focus in terms of what's the big goal that I'm working on this year or the big three, as I like to call them. In our coaching group, I have a monthly mentorship group that I told you about Goal Accelerator Club. I uh, challenge um, accelerators to just focus on three goals for the year. And then we break it all the way down. So now that you have permission to choose a focus, how do you choose which focus? Like which opportunity is the best opportunity? How do I know what to pursue or what not to pursue? And you know I'm sending you right back to your why, right? That's why I started with what is your why? What makes you burn more? Okay? Um, just make sure that you are in your lane and focus on your lane. Um. One, one thing that I like to, to do when I'm choosing which goal to focus on is to think about what could have the most domino effect. You know, when you think about all your goals, is there a goal that could help feed another goal? That like, if you put that one goal, if you'd accomplish that one goal and put that one thing into place, it will make the others flow easier. Maybe contacts from this one achieved could be used in this one to accelerate it. Are you guys, you guys picking up what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Like to choose a goal that um, that can feed the other goals? That That's one way to choose. Another way to choose is your lowest hanging fruit, right? So what can give you a solid win, like easiest? Where you might have the network, you might know somebody who can help you, you might know somebody who can point you in the right direction, you might know the training that you need to do, there's a specific opportunity in the market, like though, that's how you decide where your focus is going to go. So I'll give you this example again, uh, back to me and AIM and Goal Accelerator Club. 
Uh, this year, I had a lot more um, planned in terms of the size and the scale of the Goal Accelerator Club. But then COVID happened. When COVID happened, I saw that that window of opportunity for me to move in totally online was there. I have had that on my vision board for two years, wanting to do AIM online because we already serve so many different nationality students. And I know, you know, I know the financial aid for U.S. citizens like the back of my hand. I know it inside out. I've done it for 10 years. I was like, why should we only be focused on advising students who are in our like mile, whatever mile radius? That doesn't make any sense. But there was a lot of resistance from parents to having their kids do things online that are school related, right? But then COVID came and that disappeared. So what did I have, have to do? I had to say, okay, goal accelerator. I know I was going to expand you. I know that I was going to onboard X amount of members that was on my vision board right over there. Okay. That was the plan. But guess what? A different opportunity presented itself. So I had to be flexible to say, okay, this is the opportunity. I'm going to focus on, on, on actually moving in online and expanding that and then move that expansion plan for Goal Accelerator Club to 2021. So instead of frustrating myself, like, I'm not getting enough done with my Goal and Goal Accelerator, I had to recognize a different opportunity and shift it. And I think in accomplishing your goals, ladies, we have to be flexible. We just have to be flexible. All right. Is everything, everybody hearing me okay? Everybody with me? You there? I get nervous when I don't see the chat because then I'm like, wait, are they hearing me? Okay, everybody's hearing me. All right, good. Sorry. You know, I have technical difficulty, nervousness. Okay, perfect. All right. Now, now that you know, you, have, you know you why, you have clarity, you've decided which goal to focus on. All right. Now let's identify the key inputs. For the goal itself, what are the key inputs? What needs to happen in order to make this goal happen? A big reason why, you know, there's like a statistic, right? That say 80 odd percent of people who set um, New Year's resolutions never actually make them happen. Maybe like something like 90 something percent, okay? Y'all know the New Year's resolution people. We're human. We've all set goals and then we just haven't moved. We just haven't accomplished them. Let's talk about it. What are the key inputs? So you know this goal is really important to you because it's tied to your why. And a big reason why people don't get their best lives is because they have too many goals that are not significant enough for them. When you have your goal, you have to think about how badly you want this, why you want this, what's the cost of not getting it, and all of that, okay? Now, for the goal itself, you need to understand the price you are gonna have to pay to achieve that goal and decide to pay the price as my mom would always say somebody has to pay oh you're in the stage chat oh oh hi guys oh my goodness i'm so sorry i didn't mean to break the, the chat i i was wondering how come nobody is saying anything Okay, I was in the wrong tab. I would like to sincerely thank Candice um, for that. All right, I just want to make sure people are alive. I'm so relieved. Oh my gosh, I was like low-key, nervous, like nobody's even saying yes or no, or they agree or disagree. Okay, praise the Lord. All right, so as I said, identify the key inputs. A lot of people fail to reach their goals because they, they did not anticipate the work it would take. They did not anticipate the sacrifices they would have to make. They did not anticipate what they would have to do, who they would have to become in order to reach this goal. Don't make this mistake. You've got to think about all of the steps to get to this goal. And what you're going to have to do, what you're going to have to give up, what you're going to have to invest, what you're going to have to stop doing, right? All of that needs to be a part of it. So identify the key inputs for the goal from you. Maybe it's going to require money, the time, the people, like what are the other things that need to happen to make that goal happen? So it's like you break it all the way down. And when I start to talk about how you're going to organize it, I'm, I'm going to go into that further. Um, 
But the key inputs as well for you to become the kind of person that can achieve that goal, because it's a process of becoming, as I said. So the key inputs I've found to goal acceleration, goal achievement, is discipline. Discipline, the ability to do what you know you need to do, whether you feel like it or not. Right, Ariat? Right, Samantha? OMG. I would have enjoyed this whole presentation so much more if I knew that the chat was great. I'm so excited to see you guys talking. No, let's, let's get real. Feelings, swerve. Can, can I just get a swerve? Can, I, can, can everybody just, can we, can we have a swerve? swerve? You can do it with your hand too. Swerve, you can type it. Swerve, feelings don't come into this. If you rely on your feelings, your results are going to be inconsistent. You're going to be winning when you feel like it. And when you cannot be bothered, you're not going to do anything. So your results are going to be up and down, okay? Your income are going to, is going to be up and down. No highly successful person gets to where they get by following their feelings. Feelings are just things. You don't have to give in to them. They come and they go. They pass, they pass you by. Hello, feeling. Hello, pop down. How are you? You're passing right through. It's okay. Keep it moving. You can't rely on your feelings. So you have to have your toolkit for when the feelings come because the bad feelings will come. It is, emo and, and you know, the devil is a liar. Emotional attack is a thing. PMS is also a thing. You know how much productivity I was losing to PMS, girls, okay? I had to say, no, give me the magnesium. Where is the music? Where is the prayer? Where is the get up and move? Where is the exercise every single morning like my whole life depends on it? I exercise that my life depends on it. And I'm happy I listen to the health and wellness one. So I don't need to go into that to tell you why you need that energy. But let me tell you something. If you say that you want the life and you say you want the vision and you say you want all of those things, you have to be willing to pay the price or else you don't really want it. Or else just accept how you are, where you are, accept the income as it is, accept the size of the business, wherever it is, just accept it all right here and decide, okay, fine. Because I find that these are the real conversations I have to have with myself. How badly do you want it? You cannot allow the feelings to trump the action. So just learn to just not even like take the action anyway. I'm like, whatever. But then you're doing what you need to do to generate the good feelings. And the best way to generate the good feelings for me is prayer and exercise, which I do as a habit and routine every single morning. Do you know why I exercise this morning, guys? Because I exercise five times a week. I don't need, five times a week is good to go for me. When I just started exercising, girls, I couldn't even make it to the gym. Now, I, I remember, I asked you to remember that chubby girl at the start because, I mean, can I can I get up and show you my thing is quite torn up now? Remember how I, I showed you the, the, the kind of overweight girl at the beginning? Well, I'm, I'm here to tell you, my thing is very sorted right now. Why? I even ran a half a marathon. I ran for three hours, 20 minutes straight when I wasn't able to run for 30 seconds without feeling to die. I said, I'm not running unless somebody is chasing me down. What changed? I made my vision board. And I never just cut out pretty pictures and put on the board. I had to think very deeply about the life I wanted for myself. And it involved a lot of energy. I needed the most energy, the most confidence in the world that I could possibly get to fulfill my mission. My mission is to help people, millions, as many people as possible to unlock their potential and reach their goals. That's my mission. I do it with AIM. I do it with Goal Accelerator. Knowing my mission and my why not only helped me to build the habit of exercising and the habit of eating, eating well, but it also helped me to understand that aim and goal accelerator were the same thing, just helping people reach different goals. With goal accelerator, I'm helping women reach their personal and professional goals. With aim, I'm helping kids and families reach their college goals and afford it. I'm still helping people reach their goals. The why is what helped me to realize that I needed to build a discipline. Discipline is a skill. Forget born that way. 
Ladies, if it's one thing, suppose I talk all this time and you could take nothing away. You say, oh my God, that Nicole, she loves to talk. Just try and remember this. You are not locked into any type. You are any type you choose to be. I was not the running type. I had a runner roommate in college. I said, oh my God, this girl is annoying. She wants to wake me up 5 a.m. Me from Jamaica want to wake me up 5 a.m. in Boston winter to go running. Nikki, let's go for a run. I thought she was crazy. I'm saying, why don't they switch me to a roommate? Like, that's the same. Um, but then here I am, running marathons, running 5Ks, getting up every morning. I exercised this morning because I was coming to you. The only reason. Because I already exercised Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Those were my work days, and I know I had to bring the energy. Today, I was in the bed like, eh, eh. I want to exercise. Can't bother. Tired. I knew that I'd already done five days. I'm like, yeah, don't need to do anymore. I'm cool. And then I was like, wait, wait one second. Canadian business conference today. Fly out of the bed. Exercise because it's going to give me that energy and power. So you have to find your why. But I'm telling you, when I decided I want, and it's a decision, you have to make a decision. When I decided I was going to get all my goals no matter what, I went and studied what successful people do. And let me tell you something. The winners are exercising and they're waking up early to do it. Boom. All right. Buy a steward action. Because I know my time is running out. Buy a steward action. And, and I want you to just practice it now. The way I practiced it after an event I did last week. I bring, it's called Bring Your... It was our digital marketing event. And since November, I've actually been doing this. So what I want you to realize is everything is a work in progress. I am the National Productivity Ambassador for Jamaica. I got the Governor General's Award for Achievement and Excellence two years ago. I got and it, all of that aside and all of the titles and the, the wins and all of that aside. I am a work in progress just trying to be my best self. That's why I made Goal Accelerator so as many people as possible come on the journey for me. It was just since this November I learned how to do conferences right. Follow up immediately. Your life will change once you develop a bias toward action. You meet somebody in here, deal with it. Last week I was at a conference. I already booked one of the speakers at that conference for the Goal Accelerator Club because we have experts coming monthly. We already signed that, secured that. I already reached out and formed relationships with two very key um, PR media people who I need now, PR and media. And I was able to just go in. I also was very clear about what I wanted out of the conference. So don't just get clarity about what you need. That's why I said the key inputs, right? And then take action immediately. You're going to have to have courage. You're going to have to, this thing takes courage, okay? Every single day you reinforce your courage. Every single day you reinforce your motivation. Every single day you exercise and generate the energy you need. Every single day you say the affirm affirmations that you need. You have to build your winning into a habit and a routine or else you're going to feel like you're struggling all the time. You have to build it into a habit and routine. That is the only way. And then the hunger, which comes from the why. And one of the things I like about myself, because you have to, I hope you can name three things that you like about yourself. If we had time, I would tell you to write them down right now. That's one of the things I do in my vision board class, right? You have to write down things you love about yourself right now, as well as the things that you want to build and develop. Because you have to start from a place of love and, and just like embracing who you are, even with the imperfections, even with all the things that need to be done, even with all the things that need to be fixed and straightened and sorted. It's okay, right? So definitely from that place of love, you will find the ability to, to be kind to yourself and keep going. And I'm only learning to be kind to myself recently, but it's changed my life. I think I've been being kind to myself now for a solid 10 months. Okay. Always a work in progress. Um, that there's also a very serious correlation between discipline and happiness. That was the topic of the last school accelerator club. So I wanted to um, make sure you had this quote. The highly self-control, this is from a study, a 2013 study um, that was done. Um, the highly self-control showed a distinct difference from those with less discipline over their lives. They tended to do what? Avoid creating situations in which their goals would conflict and reported fewer instances of having to choose between short-term pleasure and long-term gain. And the result is that they experience fewer negative emotions. And what is the interpretation? Set up your life to avoid problems. What I gave a clear instruction in my house, no more problems.
processed food. We're not buying these unhealthy snacks. We're not packing up the house full of ice cream and all these things. It's over. Again, because again, a few pounds during COVID, like at the beginning of COVID, I said, it's not happening, okay? I cut it out. Now, let me tell you, I still go downstairs at 11 p.m. Or, no, I'm sleeping until 11 p.m. Generally, I go to sleep around 9. Sleep is very important. I said, right before bed, I just get the craving. The hunger monster comes for me. And I go downstairs and I just, I'm just banging around all the cupboards looking for food. But guess what? There's no food. So I just have to keep it moving. All right? Um, so don't, so what I'm saying is remove the temptation. All right. Um, okay. So reframing your mind, all things are possible. These are the things I tell myself, even though at first it's hard to believe them because you're not seeing the results yet. But I say all things are possible for you, Nicole. Wealth and abundance are your birthrights. You are a daughter of the most high. Why not you? What if it does work out? I close my eyes and I see it like clearly. That's how your vision board works because you're, you're, you teach your mind where to focus. Your reticular activation system filters out what's not important, focuses on what is. So, you know, if you buy a new white Toyota Corolla, you notice you see only white Toyota Corollas on the road. It's not because everybody bought a white Toyota Corolla. It's because now your brain knows to focus on Corollas because they're significant. That's the same thing with your dreams. That's why it's so important for you to visualize clearly and have a vision board so that your brain can be programmed to filter out the unnecessary and to focus in on your opportunities. I've also found that optimism is an extremely important superpower, no matter what. And it's been tested for me in COVID. And when I've been on my knees crying because the pivot up to the online business, girls, I need a whole session about that because that was just unreal. Um, but, you know, you have, to, you have to have optimism as a superpower. You have to fight for that optimism. Um, because when you vibrate on abundance, you attract the opportunities. And when you're cynical and resigned, you cut off the energy flow of, of, of the good things that you want. Um, I've also been learning to reframe my notion of failure that I know is just a stepping stone on the way to yes. And that it's never a failure if you can use the things and move immediately, not pop them. Um, so I want you to be thinking too about what is in your way because you can never conquer the mountain. You can only conquer yourself. So I would love for you to, and, and us going forward to be focusing on what is in our control, not what is not in our control. We can't control COVID. We can't control the economy. We can't control, but we can focus on what is in our control. Um, and so on that note, I know that procrastination is a big deal for many people. And it's something I used to really struggle with. And so I developed the five day per procrastination challenge, which you guys can definitely take um, um, it's called a Perth Procrastination Challenge. You can take, um, if you join the Goal Accelerator Club. Now, the Goal Accelerator Club is actually closed, but I decided I would open it up just for you. I even asked permission because I work with a strategist because I used to be all over the place. I'm very impulsive. I'm very, so I know I needed to invest and hire somebody to ground me, which again, look for your inputs, know what you need. And she said, yes, you can open up Goal Accelerator. So I'm, I'm opening it up for you guys. Um, but it really is a daily decision. It's a commitment. It's something you have to make a habit out of, build a routine. I would say start very small, especially if it's something new. Because when you start too big and you don't achieve it, you lose courage. You lose faith in yourself. You feel popped down. Um, but then also to achieve your goals, always have a plan B. Like I know like you commit and you say, okay, I'm going to finish doing this today and then you don't do it what's your plan b okay first thing in the morning you know that way not dumping on yourself and oh you're so worthless um you didn't do this you didn't do that i find that the conversations we have with ourselves are the most important conversations so you need to police what you are saying to yourself and give yourself grace but keep it moving and be flexible to change as you go along other things that are important in goal achievement and accountability partner social support, your network, and again, immediate action. And as part of the Goal Accelerator Club, you do get an accountability partner and we do, and you're in this, right now in this event is your network right here. I hope you've been meeting people. I hope you've taken their contact information. I hope that you continue to network through, 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 through um, all the associations and networks that you're a part of, this group that you're a part of, this is where your win is. Um, and there's so much that can be achieved from that.
Um, I talked already about planning, right? Breaking it all the way down. This was a plan I actually developed this year or last year, I'm so sorry, um, because I wanted a simple way to break down the goals, to chunk the tasks. Another thing that I do, ladies, I know I'm out of time, but I theme my days. I'm very passionate. Like Wednesday, I turned into a meeting day. Have you guys ever wanted to do something, but you can't get a block of time to do it, and you keep it, like you start doing this, and then you have this meeting, and then you have to go here, and then this person wants this, and that person, and then you're checking your email, and then... Okay, so one, I don't check my email in the morning. It puts me in a reactive state. I need to be in a proactive state. I take control of my day first. Two, I theme my days. I have all my meetings on a Wednesday. If you didn't fit this Wednesday, you need to fit next Wednesday. Because Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, I'm going to be getting my goals. I cannot be working on my business if I'm constantly in meetings. That's just me. You have to decide what will work for you. So now I put my meetings on a Wednesday. And, I, and, and for my goal accelerators who are not entrepreneurs, I tell them, talk to your boss. Tell them what you need. This is the, the support and the structure that you need. When I get all the meetings out of the way on a Wednesday, it, it saves me so much time because the other days I can focus. Monday, Mondays used to be my goal accelerator only day. Now it's like goal accelerator slash aim admin day. But Monday was also um like mondays i would also do financial stuff in the morning which i need to get on back onto as of monday so you need to think about the key things that are in your life that need attention every single week and theme them in blocks of times on certain days and then just let the routine repeat itself until everything kind of fits and it takes a while and things do get adjusted as things happen but it's a very good goal to have and it's a good thing to to practice so so far i'm clear like my wednesdays and my mondays are very clearly themed um and fridays to an extent because that's when i do fix up friday because ladies we're not going to pop down while we're reaching our goals we're going to fix up ourselves and make sure that we're putting our best best selves forward um yeah say no I, I had to say no it was so painful um and i i can send you some different ways to say no because i find that that's a big struggle for for women especially but i get asked to do so many things so many talks i'm pulled in so many different directions i just have to be saying no no i'm so sorry no i think can i interview for my dissertation not at this time can you come and do this i, I can't i can't I have to be saying a lot of no's recently just because of what i have on my plate so it is very important for you when you say yes to something you don't want to do, you, you, you end up on a really weird wavelength of resenting the person, not wanting to do it, being mad at yourself, cussing. Sometimes you get angry. Or, oh, why did they have to ask me? No, why did you say yes? So we have to be firm about our nose, ladies. Um, and then last, but certainly not least, you are what you do, not what you say you'll do. Um, and these were some of the pain points that I had, I had summarized and I got to all of them. Um, in the talk, so I'm not going to talk about them because we covered them already. Um, and this is just how sort of goal accelerator club kind of works, which, as I said, it is now open every single month. We have an expert training. Um, so yesterday was Rochelle Gapier and I, discipline and happiness. She's a happiness coach. Um, and then we have a coaching call, um, and we also have, um, a forum where we, we keep up during the um during the month on what's going on but it's only it's two life commitments every single month because other than that we want you to be actually reaching your goals not spending time talking about your goals but actually executing so that's all i don't think we have any time for questions but but maybe we do i i certainly have time for questions i don't know should i go backstage to see what's happening oh doing oh you gave me extra time oh my goodness i was rushing Oh, goodness. Do I have time? I don't even know what's going on right now. Dwayne, tell me what to do, girl. I kind of just, oh, five minutes. Okay, I think I'm done. All right, we have five minutes of questions. So please let me know if you have any questions. Samantha says, yes, the theme days. Candy says, I love scheduling out my week and blocking it out. Absolutely. Themed days. Very big believer. And blocking weeks. Dwayne, you made a good point. Blocking weeks this week. I spent all week doing college lists and college strategic plans, and I actually got all of them done. And I remember in the past years, it is amazing how this, like, blocking your time and theming your weeks works. Because in the past years, I would not have had all of them done, and then they end up costing you time, more time and aggravation over time. So I think what we need to realize 
um, ladies, is what is a time asset and what is a time liability. When you block your days and you just focus and complete something in a block, you're creating a time asset because you're freeing up your other time down the road. When you create a system, you're creating a time asset. When you auto, when you sit down and write out all your emails, next week for me is email sequence week. It's about to be on and popping Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, because I told you Wednesday are my meeting days. Oh, I have vacation next week with my husband. So Thursday and Friday don't go. Monday, Tuesday, I'll be writing email sequences all day okay all day and then wednesday i have meetings but like it is important to theme your days because you you, you buy yourself back time and theme in the weeks very key all right any questions okay time asset versus time liability absolutely so be very focused on creating as many time assets in your life as possible um delegation is creating a time asset it takes time to delegate though and the delegation mistake i've made in the past oops how do I stop sharing the screen? Whoa, buddy. I don't even know how to stop sharing the screen. I feel so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, but in the past, I have um just been like running our okay. Here I go. Okay, perfect. So the time asset versus the time liability, as I said, it's really key. Um in the past, I haven't embraced it as much. Um, but now with with me pivoting my business to online. I've really been investing in delegating properly to not just like, oh, do this for me, and you don't explain the scope of it properly to the person you're delegating to, and you leave holes in, in the instructions, and then you have to go back. And if you just train and delegate it properly, then you would empower the person that's helping you or working for you to do a better job. So that's also you know something that I am I'm working on now as well. All right, let's see questions. I don't um all right, here we go. What was the name of the woman who, who you quoted earlier in the presentation about being a work in progress? Cleo Wade, you guys have got, oh God, go and follow her right now. Love her because she, Cleo Wade um, and Amber Ray, I follow them and they helped me to be nice to myself. I am aggressive, okay? And not, no apologies. I love my aggression, right? But I am I'm aggressive. I'm driven. I'm no nonsense. I'm in your face. I'm all of those things. And I'm all those things to myself as well. But sometimes you got to cool it down. You got to scale it back. You have to give yourself some grace or else it's just like it doesn't even make sense. So Cleo Wade and Amber Ray, I found, have absolutely helped me to just calm my crazy and be nice to myself so that I move from a place of happiness and joy. So I love that. Um, okay. Adia says, okay, so I answer that. All right. Shante Robinson says, I like your vibe. Uh, any other questions? Amanda says, excellent presentation. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you, Kimisha. Okay. Thank you. Any other? I think we're done with questions now. Hey. hey, this was so fantastic. I cannot thank you enough. And you mean, you can see from the feedback, people are loving it. Guys, you have a lot of tools today from all our speakers. So we have no excuses. And if you need to find those accountability partners and you need to have somebody letting you know what you need to do when you need to do it, you better click the link I put in here about the Goal Accelerator Club. Let me put the link in again just so that you all get it. Yeah, our next expert trainer is on negotiating. I find that we need to learn how to negotiate as women, whether we're entrepreneurs or not. We need to know how to negotiate with our men, okay? When I learn how to negotiate, which, which that is <laughs> See, guys, we need to get all these stuff in order. So I will also send out an email between tomorrow, probably tomorrow afternoon, with all the speakers' contact information, all the vendors' contact information, all of the links for their deals that they have, so you will not miss out on anything. We will send you all of the information. I feel like we have like a minute left. I want to thank you, Nicole. I want to thank all our speakers. This was a dream come true for me, and I'm so happy that it was able to you know, come together during the times that we're having. And, you know, a special shout out to my team, my interns, 
are amazing. Everything you see on social media, guys, wasn't me. <laughs> running, so awesome, Daniel. Oh, they're they're amazing. They're amazing. They make me look good. And you know, thank you for all your support, everyone. We will definitely make sure that we send out the replay to everyone so you can get to watch everything again and take more notes because we're all in it for success. So I can follow, I want to connect with everybody here. Is there any way people could drop their Instagram um, in the chat, just their handles? Or is there another? Drop their handles in the chat, guys, in the stage chat. Drop it in the stage chat so Nicole can start I'm clicking on them. And I will send you all Nicole's handles. So yeah, this, this has been spectacular. I feel so relieved <laughs> that I was today because some of you might know I started back to work on Monday after yes. being off for a year because of breast cancer treatment. I was like, why did I pick Monday? I have an event on Saturday. <laughs> so it was a lot of juggling and time blocking going on, but you know what? We did it. We did it. You sure did. Congratulations to you. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's like when you can't believe that it's over. I know Look. it's a euphoria. You better go, you, you better go celebrate. <laughs> Look, I have a rum beverage waiting for me downstairs. It's all right. <laughs> all right, I was like, I did my workout. I have that beverage. Oh my gosh, I'm loving following everybody right now. I'm I'm here on this, following everybody. It was yes. Drop your handles, everyone. Drop your handles. This has been an amazing day. Amazing, amazing. I cannot wait to rewatch stuff because I still, I started taking notes. I'm like, I have more notes to take. Look, hey. me and small business women have a lot of things to do this year. 2020 is not going to get us and our businesses down. We have oh. things to do. No, money is making. You know, my friend Nick yep. gave me this awesome piece of encouragement I want to share. She said, money has found a new riverbed. You just have to find the riverbed. I was like... That's what I said. Like, okay, I'm moving in my life. And it's true. It's true. Mm -hmm. Their money is still flowing and it will flow to you. You just have to be yeah. your mind. Yep. Definitely. See, noted. So the event is over, guys. <laughs> the event is over. I don't know how long the system takes before they boot us out, but the event is over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again to everyone for all of your support. You will get an email from me with everyone's information and um, make sure you share everything you've captured online and tag us because we do have a giveaway that we're doing. It closes midnight tonight. I'm choosing five people to sit with me at a round table next Saturday so you can pick my brain on anything and you know throw out ideas at us and we can talk. So I'm looking for everything online, all right? So Nicole, you got? Did you get all the Instagram? Yeah, Nicole, copy and pasted them into my notepad so I can take my time when everybody go. All right. <laughs> okay. To connect across borders, and that's one blessing of COVID, even though it has been such a horrible, horrible disaster. But the blessing is now borders are just porous. Like we're just over here, like you in Canada, I'm in Jamaica, you over there in Atlanta. We just so that's why I wanted to make sure I get everybody linked. Yes, perfect. And people, when the borders open up, I know I'll be in Jamaica, so meet you there. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm actually having a retreat in Jamaica. I'm going to tell you more about it. Of course, when it's safe. Who knows when that is? When, yeah, I'm waiting for stage 25. I know. So just when that stage comes, I'm there. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs>